double defense spending by 2027. Japan's strategies align closely with our own national security strategy, both in the key challenges that we identify as well as in how to effectively address them. We're committed to upholding shared values of democracy and human rights, defending the international rule of law, continuing to lead the world in tackling global challenges that no one country can solve alone, like the climate crisis and deadly viruses. We agree that the PRC is the greatest shared strategic challenge that we and our allies and partners face. We stand together with Ukraine against President Putin's war, which threatens the principles at the heart of the international rules-based order, including that all nations should be able to chart their own path and have their sovereignty, their independence, their territorial integrity respected. In the face of these and other challenges, today we discuss ways to deepen our coordination, including on allied command and control, intelligence, surveillance, and reconnaissance, joint and shared usage of facilities, increased bilateral exercises. More than ever before, we're buttressing the U.S.-Japan alliance through deeper cooperation with other allies and partners through both regional and multilateral bodies. In the face of the DPRK's unlawful and reckless missile launches, including the launch of a long-range ballistic missile over Japan in October, we're deepening our trilateral cooperation with the Republic of Korea to deter and, if necessary, defend against aggression. That's a pledge the leaders of our three countries underscored in their November trilateral summit. Uh, today, we held our first formal dialogue in this 2 plus 2 format on extended deterrence, namely to enhance the capability and credibility of our allied defense against a wide range of threats. Uh, in June uh, of 2022, Prime Minister Kishida became the first Japanese leader to attend a NATO summit. Japan is spearheading the NATO Asia Pacific Partners Group, demonstrating the growing synergy between our Atlantic and Pacific alliances. We're working together with our G7 partners to impose coordinated sanctions on Russia for its aggression in Ukraine and to help Ukraine repair, restore, and defend its embattled energy grid. We look forward to Japan's leadership in driving an ambitious agenda on these and other priorities during its presidency of the G7 this year, culminating in the Hiroshima summit. Uh, Japan has also stepped up to help our European friends diversify their LNG supply in response to President Putin's weaponization of energy. We're working to advance peace and security through regional bodies like ASEAN, whose centrality is vital to the Indo-Pacific and through the Quad, including by working with India and Australia to expand what we call maritime domain awareness, basically giving our partners a better ability to uh, detect and respond to challenges in their territorial waters, like illegal fishing, trafficking, climate-related disasters. At the United Nations, uh, we're rallying member states to defend the rights at the core of the United Nations Charter. It's been less than two weeks since Japan took its non-permanent seat. The Security Council, already we see its leadership on key priorities like peace building, Afghanistan, and the ministerial, uh, the foreign minister will chair tomorrow on the rule of law. And because our national security strategy is so bound up in our economic and energy security, we're strengthening our cooperation in these spheres as well. Uh, in May, we joined a dozen other economies that represent 40 percent of global GDP to launch the Indo-Pacific Economic Framework, which sets out a roadmap to help our economies grow faster and fairer so that all of our people can reach their full potential. Last month, we kicked off the first Japan-U.S. Energy Security Dialogue. Tomorrow, our governments will co-host the fifth Indo-Pacific Business Forum in Tokyo. We're constantly expanding the horizons of our cooperation, <laughs> beyond even our planet. Uh, later this week, um, Foreign Minister and I will sign a new agreement on U.S.-Japan cooperation in space. This agreement has been a decade in the making. It covers everything from joint research to working together to land the first woman and person of color on the moon. The bottom line is this. We and our people are always stronger and more secure together. Today, we've taken yet another step toward tightening already incredibly strong bonds. With that, Yogi, the floor is yours. Secretary Blinken, Secretary Austin, Minister Hamada, and I have just come out of the Japan US 2 plus 2 meeting, which we had in person, where we engaged in extremely meaningful exchange of views. During the past year, since the previous 2 plus 2 meeting, 
Russia's aggression of Ukraine, an event that shakes the foundation of international order, occurred, placing the international community at historical crossroads. In the midst of elevated severity in the security environment, today's Japan US 2 plus 2 took place at a timing shortly after the release of strategic documents by both countries. Today's meeting delivered three major outcomes, and let me go through them one by one. First, based on the strategic documents of our two countries, we were able to hold in-depth discussions to confirm the alignment of the recognition on both sides over the regional strategic environment thoroughly and in detail. Specifically, first of all, on China, China presents an unprecedented and the greatest strategic challenge. Its foreign policy to recreate international order to serve its self-interest is a grave concern for the Japan-U.S. alliance and for the whole of the international community. Upon confirming such shared recognition, we confirmed that Japan and the U.S. will continue to be united in raising objections against China's attempts to change status quo in the East China Sea, including its behavior that seeks to undermine long years of administration by the Grand of the Senkaku Islands. We also confirmed our strong opposition against unlawful claims and coercive and provocative efforts and actions by China in the South China Sea. We re reaffirmed that the basic positions of our two countries over Taiwan remains unchanged and confirmed the importance of maintaining peace and stability of the Taiwan Straits, which is an essential element for the safety and prosperity of the international community. At the same time, we concurred that there have not been any changes to our policies to strengthen communication with China, including in the area of security. On Russia, we reaffirmed our notion that aggression of Ukraine shakes the foundation of international order, accused Russia for its reckless nuclear rhetoric and attacks against civilian infrastructure, and concurred to continue our strong support to Ukraine. In addition, we shared our concern over the enhanced military cooperation between China and Russia. Further on North Korea, we strongly accused them for the launch of ballistic missiles during the past year at unprecedented frequency and reaffirmed our unwavering commitment towards the complete denuclearization of North Korea based on UN Security Council resolutions. With our positions perfectly aligned, we agreed to continue to work closely together in responding to the North Korea Korea issue, including the pursuit of immediate resolution of the abduction issue. Well, we agreed about deepening uh, the trilateral cooperation between uh, uh, the three countries. Secondly, we affirmed uh, the further endeavors to bolster the deterrence and response capabilities of the Japan-U.S. alliance in view of the new strategies based on the increasingly severe security environment. I welcome the U.S. resolve to optimize the force posture in the Indo-Pacific, including Japan, and we decided to continue close the consultation how to further optimize the U.S. force posture in Japan, including the readjustment of the USFJ realignment announced this uh, time. Extended deterrence was one of the agenda, and uh, there was in-depth discussions at the ministerial level, spending some time. Having discussed uh, that, we reaffirmed the strong U.S. commitment to the defense of Japan, underpinned by the full range of U.S. capabilities, including nuclear. Furthermore, uh, there was an affirmation of strong support by the U.S. on the new security policy of Japan in that it will fundamentally reinforce the deterrence capability of the alliance. In addition, we agreed on the importance of deepening our cooperation in the areas of space and cyber, the promotion of technological cooperation and further strengthening of information security. The fact that we were able to agree on the announcement of the applicability of Article 5 of the japan US Security Treaty on attacks and others in outer space, outer space was a significant achievement in terms of the uh, reinforcement of deterrence capability of the alliance as a whole. Thirdly, we once again affirmed the importance of the reduction of the impact on the local communities, including Okinawa. We also reaffirmed that in order to avoid the continued use of Marine Corps air station to Tenma, the relocation to Henoko is the only solution. But furthermore, I once again requested the U.S. side of safe operations with utmost consideration to the impact on the local communities. 
Appropriate responses to incident existing clearly sharing information in a timely manner and on environmental issues and confirmed our close coordination. The joint announcement, the joint statement issued as a result of this 2 plus 2 is a presentation of a vision of a modernized alliance to acquire the posture to win in the new era of strategic competition. Uh, the vision will be executed speedily, and together with Minister Hamada, Secretary Blinken, and Secretary Austin, uh, we will constantly bolster the Japan-U.S. alliance. Thank you. Well, good afternoon, everyone, and thanks to everyone for being here. At the outset, let me thank my friend and colleague, Secretary Blinken, for hosting today's U.S.-Japan 2 plus 2 ministerial meeting. Thanks, Tony. Minister Hamada, Minister Hayashi, I want to underscore my support for the bold decisions that Japan has made in your 2022 national security strategy, your national defense strategy, and your defense buildup program. There is clear strategic alignment between the visions of President Biden and Prime Minister Kishida. It is a shared commitment to uphold the rules-based international order and to strengthen resilient partnerships around the globe. And the essential U.S.-Japan alliance is at the center of these efforts. Our respective defense strategies provide a strong foundation for our ongoing work to modernize the U.S.-Japan alliance. In addition, Japan's commitments to substantially increase its defense spending and to invest in defense institutions and infrastructure and capabilities will accelerate our alliance's efforts. You know, I'm grateful that we're meeting at such a consequential time as Japan strengthens its own defense and further contributes to regional peace and stability. Today, we welcomed a, an historic alliance decision to optimize U.S. force posture in Japan by forward stationing more versatile, mobile, and resilient capabilities. These actions will bolster deterrence in the region and allow us to defend Japan and its people more effectively. In an, increase, in an increasingly challenging security environment, We've decided that the 12th Artillery Regiment would remain in Japan and be reorganized into the 12th Marine Littoral Regiment by 2025. We will equip this new formation with advanced intelligence, surveillance, surveillance and reconnaissance, as well as anti-ship and transportation capabilities that are relevant to the current and future threat environments. These posture updates adhere to the basic tenets of the 2012 realignment plan, and they will strengthen our alliance's ability to maintain regional peace and stability. We also discussed updating our alliance's roles and missions so that Japan can more actively contribute to regional security alongside the United States and other like-minded partners. And so in our meeting today, we strongly endorse Japan's decision to acquire a counter-strike capability. And we affirm that close coordination on employing this capability will strengthen the U.S.-Japan alliance. We also discussed a number of key issues, including our shared interest in peace and stability in the East and South China Seas and around Taiwan and our commitment to, de to the denuclearization of North Korea, and our efforts to increase multilateral cooperation with the Republic of Korea, Australia, and other like-minded partners, and our growing cooperation across all domains, including space and cyber. Now, as you've heard me say before, the People's Republic of China is a pacing challenge for the Department of Defense. Japan and the United States remain united in our concern over China's destabilizing actions. And I want to reaffirm the United States' ironclad commitment to defend Japan with the full range of capabilities, including nuclear 
and underscore that Article 5 of the Mutual Security Treaty applies to the Senkaku Islands. And tomorrow, Minister Hamada and I will sign new arrangements that will increase opportunities for the Japanese and the United States defense enterprises to closely cooperate on advanced technologies as well as increase linkages between our respective industrial bases. And our close consultations today have advanced our alliance's efforts to address common challenges ahead of President Biden and Prime Minister Kushida's meeting at the White House this week. I'll close by reiterating that the U.S.-Japan alliance remains the cornerstone of our Indo-Pacific strategy, and it's critical to upholding a free and open regional order. Our alliance is stronger than ever, building on a foundation of teamwork, trust, and shared values that, that has underpinned our relationship for decades. And so there is no challenge that we can overcome if we continue to work shoulder to shoulder. Thank you. At the outset, I would like to thank the Distinguished Secretary of State and members of the Republic of the Korean Peninsula for having organized the protection of the environment surrounding us. As we face the changing of the world's international order and the Pacific まで Line of ポジションセンシティブ、インテグレートオーミンズ、エンドジェルジェスティ、ディテクティブ、ディテクティブ、ディテクティブ、ディテクティブ、ディテクティブ、ディテクティブ、ディテクティブ、ディテクティブ、
It is said that will significantly strengthen the deterrent and response capabilities of the Japan-U.S. alliance, and at the same time will demonstrate the robust commitment of the U.S. to the defense of Japan. In order to execute these plans, we will coordinate closely with the U.S. side. I also mentioned that for the stable stationing and activities of USFJ, the understanding by the local community, such as Okinawa, is crucial. We will continue to work on the reduction of impact on Okinawa. It was extremely significant that at a timing so soon after the two countries had formulated the strategic documents that would guide the future national security and defense policies that the four ministers responsible for defense and foreign policy got together and had the opportunity to engage in in-depth discussions on how to implement their respective strategy. I shall continue the discussions in order to bolster our alliance. Thank you. Side. We will start with Sean Tandon of the AFP. Hi there. Uh, good evening. Uh, thanks for this. Um, uh, can I follow up on a couple of things that you just announced? Uh, speaking about the Marine Littoral Regiment, um, uh, both, of the defense, both the Defense Secretary and Defense Minister spoke of the, increase in, uh, the increasingly challenging security environment. Uh, can you be more specific in what you're responding to? Is it specifically China? Is these, uh, are these uh, contingencies in Taiwan or potentially in the Senkoku Islands, North Korea? Uh, and also, you mentioned the impact in Okinawa. Uh, is there any concern that this could aggravate tensions locally in Okinawa? Will this result in a net uh, increase in the, uh, in the forces there? Um, and uh, if you don't mind, uh, could I also ask about space? There have been some reports that space will now be included as part of the defense uh, partnership. Could you, could you comment on that? Uh, and for, on the American side, if you, don't if you don't mind, a couple of questions that are a little bit uh, off topic. Uh, to Secretary Austin, the situation in Ukraine, uh, Solidar, um, there have been lots of reports. Uh, the Wagner Group has claimed to control it. Uh, and there's been another shakeup in the Russian military command. What do you make of this? Uh, do you think that it's fallen? Uh, what significance do you see? Uh, and Secretary Blinken, um, a couple of days ago, uh, you're just in Latin America yesterday, but a couple of days ago in Brazil, there was, of course, the, uh, the unrest. Uh, former President Bolsonaro remains in the United States. There have been some calls from the Democratic Party to uh, make a persona non grata. How tenable is it to, for him to stay in Florida uh, despite what happened a couple of days ago in Brazil? Yeah. Thanks very much. You want to start? So I, I, lost count, I lost count on a number of questions, but uh, we'll try to knock them down if we miss, miss one, and then we'll double back. First, uh, let me begin with the question you asked on Solodar and whether or not it's fallen to, uh, to the Russians. Uh, at this point, we can't uh, corroborate uh, that reporting. Of course, I've seen, uh, seen some of that reporting. Uh, but you know that this has been a very fluid, uh, dynamic uh, environment, dynamic fight uh, in that area. It's gone back and forth uh, a number of times, and it, it really is uh, some pretty brutal fighting. Uh, but the Ukrainians have... Uh, uh, acquitted themselves very, very, uh, in, a, in a very impressive fashion as they, they fought a very, continued to fight a very determined fight. Uh, we are focused on doing everything we can to help make sure that the Ukrainians have the capabilities uh, that they need to be successful in their efforts to defend their sovereign territory. You know, we've been, uh, we, we talk, I talk to my counterpart routinely. Uh, we're, we're going to conduct another Ukraine contact group, uh, defense contact group meeting uh, next week in Germany, uh, where we'll get another, we'll get 50 or so uh, ministers of, of defense together uh, to talk about what Ukraine's needs are now and uh, what they need to be successful going forward. So you've heard us say over and over again that, that we're going to support Ukraine for as long as it takes. And from everything that I can see from our allies and partners, uh, they feel the same way. So we remain uh, united in our efforts. On the Marine Littoral Regiment, uh, we believe that this brings, this, this capability brings uh, uh, a tremendous uh, capability to the, uh, to the Alliance. Uh, we're replacing uh, an artillery regiment with an outfit that's, uh, that's more lethal, uh, more, uh, more agile, uh, more capable. And as you have seen from, you know, what's been 
uh, published on this, uh, on this particular formation. It consists of uh, a, a combat element, which is a battalion size element, uh, a long range fires element, which allows us to, uh, gives us an anti-ship capability, which I think is, is very, very important. And, and also a logistical element that uh, helps sustain uh, the, the overall uh, regiment there. So uh, I think this is going to contribute in a, in a major way in our efforts to help defend Japan and also promote a, uh, a free and open Indo-Pacific. And that's really our focus. You know, Japan, we share a common vision with Japan to, uh, to maintain a free and open Indo-Pacific. And all the things that we're doing, uh, you know, points uh, towards that, that, that direction. So I'm going to stop there and, and uh, allow uh, Minister uh, Hamada to, to comment, if you'd like. Regarding the, the current topic, our position is in Okinawa, but there are realignment and many other comments referred to. With regard to these aspects, we understand and together with the U.S. forces, including the coordination, our discussion will have to take place. At the any stage regarding the matters in Okinawa, there is a relationship with the local communities, and we will have to continue our effort to explain in order to overcome these challenges. Thank you. Sean, just to uh, respond, I think, to a couple of other questions you asked. Uh, First, in terms of the security environment that we're dealing with, uh, there is, uh, I think it's no secret that it is a more uh, challenging one. Uh, and uh, we see uh, different uh, challenges to the status quo coming from uh, different countries, including China, including the DPRK, including, of course, Russia. Uh, even though what, uh, that aggression against Ukraine is happening in Europe, it has profound implications for countries around the world, uh, including in Asia, because this is not only a challenge to Ukraine and uh, the lives and livelihoods of its people, it's a challenge to the entire uh, international rules-based order and the very principles that underlie that order that are so important in every part of the world. Sovereignty, independence, territorial integrity, the right to shape your own future. That's why Japan from day one has been such a strong partner uh, with us and many other countries in seeking to uphold that order, uh, whether it comes to Russia's aggression or in any uh, other areas. Um, you asked about our, our cooperation in, in space. Well, there, there's cooperation in cyberspace and there's cooperation in outer space. We'll be putting out a statement, if it's not already out, that reflects the uh, additional steps that we've taken. But this is very significant. Uh, we're working to deepen our cooperation across every realm, uh, land, sea, air, and yes, uh, space, cyber, and, uh, and outer. Uh, the outer space component of this is an important security and prosperity of, uh, of our alliance. We agreed, as you've heard, that attacks to, from, or within space present a clear challenge. And we affirmed that, uh, depending on the nature of those attacks, this could lead to the invocation of Article 5 of our Japan-U.S. Security Treaty. Uh, that is significant. Uh, we'll sign, as I mentioned, a space agreement a little bit later this week uh, at, uh, at NASA. On cyber, uh, we have emphasized the foundational importance of cybersecurity and information security uh, for our alliance we agreed there as well to deepen our collaboration. This is a challenge that we both face, other countries face. It's important that we work on it together. Uh, we're all learning lessons uh, in uh, dealing with the challenges that come in uh, cyberspace. Being able to share best practices, being able to um, support one another is more important than ever. We're also committed in that light to bolstering technology cooperation, as well as making joint investments in emerging technologies to try to further sharpen the competitive edge uh, of the alliance. Last, uh, last question, as I heard it, uh, with regard to Brazil. Um, as President Biden told President Lula, we stand with the people of Brazil, we stand with Brazil's democracy and its institutions. Um, the President will have an opportunity to uh, confer directly and closely with President Lula uh, when he visits Washington uh, in, in early February, uh, and uh, the President looks very much forward to that. Um, President Lula has called for an investigation of uh, the events of uh, January 8th. Uh, I'm not going to get ahead of that. Uh, we've not received any specific requests 
from uh, Brazilian authorities. Of course, if and when we do, we'll work expeditiously to respond, uh, as we always do. Uh, and then with regard to individuals, uh, we're talking now about uh, people who are private citizens. Um, we've heard various public statements that have been made uh, by those individuals about their plans, but uh, we really don't have anything to add, and it's not appropriate for us to comment on any individual's visa status. I have a question to both foreign and defense ministers of Japan and the United States. In East Asia, there are concerns over the Um, I have uh, a little to add because my colleagues have covered it so well. Suffice to say that, um, first, we are united in uh, ways that, at least in my experience over the last 30 years, we've never been uh, before. There's greater convergence in our approach, greater alignment in our approach 
uh, both in terms of the way we see the challenges and how we propose to uh, respond to them uh, than, uh, than ever before. And I think that's very significant, and you've heard both ministers speak to it. The statements that we're putting out, or we've already put out uh, this afternoon, will reflect in detail that alignment, that convergence between Japan uh, and the United States. Uh, when it comes to, um, uh, to Taiwan, uh, I think it's very important to note that what we've seen from China in recent years, not recent months, recent years, is unfortunately an effort to undermine the longstanding status quo, a status quo that's maintained peace and stability uh, for decades. Uh, we, on the other hand, want to sustain that status quo. We want to bolster it. Um, we oppose any unilateral change to the status quo by either side. Uh, we'll continue for uh, a calm, resolute approach to uphold peace and stability. Uh, Japan and the United States are united uh, in, that, uh, in that effort. Um, as you've heard us say, our alliance is a cornerstone of peace, security, and prosperity in the Indo-Pacific, and the steps that we announced today uh, will strengthen the alliance's ability uh, to uphold the rules-based order that we are both very much committed to. I think my, our, my colleagues have, uh, did a, have done a tremendous job of, uh, of outlining the, the, the key points here, and so I won't plow that ground again, but uh, I would just say that we, we really do remain committed to enhancing resiliency and interoperability between uh, U.S. and Japanese uh, forces and, and deepening uh, the operational cooperation. Uh, so uh, the things that, that we touched upon today, especially uh, the agreement to increase bilateral exercises and, and, and training, I think are, are, are a real powerful statement of that, of that commitment. So I look forward to continuing to work with my colleagues on, on these issues going forward. Our next question goes to Rio Kiyomaya from Asahi Shinbun. Thank you so much. Um, I'm Rio Kiyomiya from Asahi Shinbun, Washington, D.C. Bureau. I have questions for each of you. Uh, first, Secretary Austin, um, while U.S. and Japan share the concern about the China's military aggression, how can the U.S. manage the relationship with China and avoid miscalculation leading to the contingencies. Um, and last October, you said that you don't see an imminent invasion of Taiwan by China. Do you still hold that view? And also, if I may, um, Japan decided to establish a self-defense force joint headquarter. From your perspective, what would be the ideal alliance command and control relationship between U.S. and Japan to enhance the interoperability and readiness? And Secretary Blinken, uh, regarding U.S.-China relations, how do you plan to manage and build the um, relationship with China during your upcoming engagement with China? And also, what kind of role do you expect Japan to play in diplomacy to manage this relationship? And finally, to Minister Hamada and Minister Hayashi, um, there is a growing sense of risk about China's invasion of Taiwan. In the previous 2 plus 2 meeting, U.S. and Japan welcomed the robust progress on bilateral planning for contingencies. How do you evaluate the current progress on bilateral planning for contingencies so far with the U.S.? Also, from the perspective of deterring China's aggression, how do you evaluate the recent U.S. announcement of reorganization of Marines in Okinawa into the Marine Littoral Regiment? Thank you. Okay, thank you. Um, I think your first question was, how do we avoid miscalculation? Um, you, you heard me say a number of times that it, it's absolutely critical that, that leaders of uh, great powers maintain open lines of communication uh, and be able to talk with each other. Uh, and that way we can, we, we can avoid miscalculation wherever possible. Uh, and you see us continuing to try to uh, ensure that uh, we, we keep those lines open. Uh, and I would invite my, my colleagues uh, in China 
uh, to meet us uh, halfway there uh, and, uh, and, and work hard to keep those lines of communication open. Uh, and, and, and that is the, the primary and best way to avoid that miscalculation. Of course, you know, I believe that our forces are, are trained and disciplined to the degree that, uh, you know, they're going to do everything within their power to avoid any kind of misunderstanding or miscalculation. But again, that dialogue is enormously important. So, and then you, you know, your second question was uh, regarding uh, whether or not China is, whether or not an invasion of Taiwan by China is imminent. Um, you know, I, I won't second guess Mr. Xi, but what I will tell you what we're seeing recently is some very provocative behavior and, uh, on, the, on the part of China's forces uh, and their attempt to reestablish a new normal. So we've seen increased activity, uh, in, uh, aerial activity uh, in the Straits. We've seen increased surface vessel activity uh, around Taiwan. Uh, and again, uh, we believe that they, they endeavor to establish a new normal, uh, but uh, whether or not that means that an invasion is imminent, uh, you know, I, I seriously doubt that. So uh, we will continue to watch uh, and we will continue to work with our allies and partners to do everything that we can uh, to ensure that we promote peace and stability uh, in the Strait and in, uh, and in the region uh, overall. And uh, just quickly to more broadly to add to that on China, um, as you know, President Biden, President Xi had a very open, candid conversation during the last G20 meeting in, in Bali, um, and they spoke about our intentions. Uh, President Biden shared our intentions and our priorities, and we uh, got some sense of that from President Xi as well. As the Secretary of Defense just said, these lines of communication, starting with the President's, but also including uh, many of us, are vitally important, vitally important to, to keep op open and uh, I would hope to deepen, because as the Secretary of Defense said, uh, what we don't want is for any misunderstanding uh, to uh, veer into, uh, into conflict. Um, I will have an opportunity to travel to, uh, to China in the coming weeks to follow up on the President's discussions, uh, precisely to move forward on those lines of communication uh, between us. Uh, we, both of our countries, Japan and the United States, have complex and consequential relationships with China. And there are clearly uh, aspects of intense competition uh, between us. Uh, there are uh, aspects as well of cooperation. Uh, and it's important to see if we can pursue those. We hear from countries around the world uh, the desire for the United States, China, Japan to manage this relationship responsibly. And uh, if there are areas where we can cooperate that would be to the benefit not only of our own people, but of people around the world, whether it's in climate, whether it's in global health, whether it's in dealing with, uh, with drugs, um, we should pursue them. But we are going to compete vigorously. The President's been very clear about that. We're not looking for conflict. We'll manage the competition responsibly, but we will compete vigorously. And we will seek to keep these lines of communication open uh, and do all that we can to establish guardrails to prevent competition, as I said, from veering into conflict. First of all, U.S. U.S.'s commitment and optimization of the posture in the Indo-Pacific, including Japan, is very much welcome. And including the re-coordination of the rearmament of U.S. forces in Japan in order to optimize the posture of USFJ, we decided to continue our close consultations. And this may not be a direct response to your question, but I may have misunderstood. Your question is in fine on the guideline. There was no discussion over U.S.-Japan guidelines regarding the necessity of the re-coordination of the U.S.-Japan U.S. guidelines. Of course, it is being constantly studied, but we don't assume that it will be immediately necessary. On the U.S.-Japan bilateral planning, in 2015, based upon the the guidelines for Japan-U.S. defense cooperation, the Japan-U.S. Uh, governments ought to prepare and renew bilateral planning 
And we very much welcomed the steadfast progress of this task. And in order to respond to the very severe security environment in Japan, by maintaining the remaining uh, rainfall in Okinawa after the realignment, decision was made to the third division of the Marine Corps and the twelfth regiment of the Marine Corps and agreed to realign into MLR by 2025. We believe that this will bolster the U.S. chain posture in Japan, and this also is a demonstration of the unwavering commitment of the United States towards the defense of Japan, and together with the fundamental reinforcement of defense capabilities of Japan, uh, this will significantly elevate the deterrence and response capabilities of our alliance against attacks, armed attacks to Japan. This will be the last question. Tajima san Asahi Shimbun, newspaper. Thank you. During this meeting, I believe the new national security strategy and the new defense strategy were the main topics. So I asked Minister Hayashi and Minister Hamada. So the reinforcement of defense, including counter strike capability, and the meaning and the goal of significant increase of defense expense, how did it explain to the U.S. side, please? And then Secretary Blinton and Secretary Austin, if I may, uh, the strengthening of Japan's defense capability. What is your assessment? And uh, the new strategies of both countries have been uh, really going forward, the deterrence and the response capability of the two countries. How do you intend to elevate? Earlier, Minister Hayashi referred to the guideline about the possibility of the need to revise the guideline. What is your view? Thank you. Please allow me to start. At the 2 plus 2 today, the, based on the new strategy, we affirm the future activities in order to bolster the defense and response capabilities of the alliance under the new strategy in light of the increasingly severe security environment. I mentioned that the fundamental reinforcement of Japan's defense capability will lead to further effective exercise of U.S. capabilities, and that in turn would mean a further reinforcement of the deterrence response capabilities of the battle alliance and would play a huge role for the peace and stability of the region. But the U.S. in response expressed firm support. As I mentioned earlier, as a result of the 2 plus 2, the joint statement to be released, but this presents a vision of the alliance and the new era of strategic competition. Uh, the plans will be implemented speedily, and together with Minister Hamada, Secretary Clinton, and Secretary Austin, we will constantly bolster the bilateral alliance. If I may, regarding the fundamental reinforcement of Japan's defense in order to speedily realize about the significant increased defense, uh, we will acquire new uh, capabilities, including war sustainability uh, and counter-strike capability, and express my very strong uh, commitment, as Minister Hayashi just uh, mentioned, the U.S. side uh, mentioned that they will strongly support to Japan's new strategy that this is a major evolution of the bilateral alliance based on today's discussion in this most severe and complex security environment after the war, but we will fundamentally reinforce the defense capability, including the counter-strike capability, and together, in order to make the U.S. alliance be a contribution to peace, stability, and prosperity of the region and the world, we will continue to work with Secretary Austin, Secretary Blinken, and Minister Hayashi to strengthen the alliance. Thank you. And thank you for the question. Um, it's very simple. We heartily welcome uh, the new strategies, uh, especially because there is, as I said, and we've all said, uh, remarkable convergence between our strategy and strategies and Japan's. Um, we applaud the commitment to uh, increased investment, uh, to enhanced roles, missions, and capabilities that you've heard to closer cooperation, not only between the United States and Japan, but as well with other allies and other partners on a bilateral basis, but also on a trilateral and multilateral basis. We already have a strong foundation. Uh, that's only going to, to grow. Um, as we read them, the, these new documents really reshape the alliance's ability to promote peace and protect the rules-based order uh, in the region, but also beyond, uh, around the world. 
I think what you're seeing in real time is an alliance that is modernizing. And the United States and Japan are working in lockstep to be prepared for the emerging challenges in the Indo-Pacific and beyond. So we could not be more, uh, more pleased with the work that we're doing together, but also, and I have to say, uh, for Japan's uh, extraordinary leadership, I know uh, President Biden will have an opportunity to share that appreciation with Prime Minister Kishida when he welcomes him here to Washington later this week. I certainly agree with uh, Secretary Blinken. There is clear strategic alignment uh, between the visions of President Biden and uh, Prime Minister Kashida. You see that reflected in the, in the strategies as you put them side by side. Uh, we are all focused on uh, maintaining a rules-based international order and promoting uh, peace and stability in the region. Uh, so what you've heard us talk about uh, today, the things that we discussed in the meeting, really bring that strategy to life. Optimizing force posture, uh, agreeing to uh, increase our bilateral uh, exercises and training events, uh, all of those things are, are real good indicators that all of us are committed to making sure that, as uh, Prime Minister Hamada has said previously, we don't just write strategies. You know, we, 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 we do the things necessary to be able to execute them. And this is work that's never finished. Okay, we, so we will continue to uh, work to optimize force pro, uh, posture and, and, uh, and increase interoperability so that we maintain a credible uh, deterrent force. Uh, and I look forward to continuing to work with my colleagues uh, to, to, to do that, what I would call hard government work. But, uh, but thank you very much. Thank you, Your Excellency. Thank you, everyone. That concludes the press conference.